Okay, this is my favorite section because a lot of people don't know about digital assets and how they can be used. And today, uh, how many of you know what digital assets are? Ooh. <laughs> Great. This is, as soon as I tell you, you're going you're gonna to say, oh, yeah, okay. Here's your digital assets. Your digital assets are hosted video. This is on your website. If you have video on your website, it's basically hosted. It's media. It's one other thing. And this is kind of, um, uh, Jim, to, to talk about what you wanted. This is kind of how you can get your content out, you know. But first it has to be somewhere. You first have to have content. You have to have good content for people to want it. That's the first thing. So whatever you do, if you have good content, people will, you know, something that's intelligent and something that, that really gives some value, people are going to want it. So you have hosted video. You have podcasts. Um, that would also include video uh, casts, which means a video that's basically audio and video. Um, press releases, images. By the way, on YouTube, YouTube is the second largest search engine next to Google. A lot of people don't know that. But 13% of the people looking at videos on YouTube are looking at how-to videos. There's a lot of data on that. So if you create a little how-to video, one, two minutes, and put it on you, in your YouTube channel, that would, be, that would be a great way to leverage a service or business. First, you create the content and do a video. We actually have a videographer here that could probably talk about it. But first, you create the content of the video. And then what I'm talking about here is the video first is on your website. So you embed a video player, and you have the video. Actual content is on your website. That's hosted video. We're not talking about YouTube yet. We're first talking about what's on your site. So I'm talking about digital assets on your site right now. So you create a video, whether it's a how-to video or a demo of something, a product or a service, or a chat about services. In other words, you're creating content that's, that's reasonable, um, and you present it in one of these ways. So you're either going to make a video about it, you're going to do a podcast about it, um, you might do a press release if you have a new product, service, whatever. These are online things, so it's an online press release. But this is not distribution of it. This is having that press release on your website right now. Um, and, and basically, you could also have email newsletters hosted on your website. In other words, every time you write a newsletter, have an archive on your site so people can go back and look at old emails. Now, if those are in HTML, not PDFs, although you can optimize PDFs, it's much more difficult. But if you have um, hosted archive of newsletters and you optimize every newsletter, that content will also be found when searched. So right now what I'm talking about is everything that you can do here can be optimized. Images can be optimized. So if you're in Flickr, I mean, it, this is on your site first. So we're talking about hosted, and I'll talk. The next slide deals with the other, the other uh, situation. Um, so basically white papers. And you can, as I said, you can do PDF if you, uh, you know, and most people do the white papers in PDF. You can optimize those blogs. And I don't have email here, but email newsletters also would be another resource uh, for, for you to have a, a digital asset. It, these are assets. And the optimization rules are the same. So when I write my blog post, for example, I often sit with my list of keywords and see if how many keywords can I get in the title? Do I have a good title that people are going to find? You know, if I do a video, we typically chop it up and have good titles so that people can find them. It's keyword rich, uh, is what we say. Now, here's what we call posted. Here's your digital assets, and this uh, gets to your question. These are posted. In other words, you need to upload these to these channels. So this is the sharing aspect of all of this, and this is part of that universal blended search. So basically, um, we have posted video, video sharing on YouTube. So you create a YouTube channel. Now, remember, your, your, your video is already optimized. Now, if you have to, for example, what we might do is take an hour, hour and a half presentation. I will put that entirely on my blog. That will be all optimized. It'll be all, you know, keyword rich, all that good stuff for my, for my blog, which is hosted by our website. But then I might chop it up into 10-minute segments and have each one of those segments have a 
really a topical you know, keyword so that people can find that 10 minutes and try to you know, put it into a, um, you know, a section that, that is keyword optimized, rich for content, but also hosted at YouTube so that those are not more than 10 minutes or five minutes or shorter. Okay? Um, and then, uh, then basically, uh, you can do the same thing for your images. Uh, by the way, YouTube is not the only video sharing channel. If you go to Tube Mogul, they allow you to upload your videos to many other uh, video sharing search engines. So once you've optimized it, you can post it in a variety of places. So you know you can you can look at uh, you know obviously there's Google Video, but then that's YouTube, and you know you can do Google Video and YouTube. I mean there there are different platforms. But it, it, uh, the other one that we use a lot is SlideShare. If you haven't been on SlideShare yet, you might want to go. It's presentations. It's for business. More people use SlideShare, business people, to view business related videos so that might be a place to put content slide share very good place very much used by the business community online um, then you have your images Flickr and there are other image sharing sites but I would say Flickr is the biggest one that you might want to put your upload your, your, um, your just your pictures any, any kind of picture content that you have image content you can, you can optimize for that and um, companies come up especially you were talking about e-commerce I think you can put your products in, in a video on Flickr and, and just take pictures of them and optimize the pictures and the videos and then you have, you have a lot of those assets that, that are optimized that can link back to your site. It depends on whether that, if it's live and it's a live chat service, it depends on whether it was taped for publication later. If, you, if, it's, if it's live, it, it depends. It depends on how they do it on the other end. If they're actually taping it and then posting it, I mean, Google does a lot of that. They do like online seminars, but they actually tape it uh, on their end. So the presentation is taped, and you can upload it or download it wherever they they basically post it. Which, by the way, those of you that are taking notes, um, it's great. But we're going to actually have this on on my blog in a couple of weeks. We'll probably have this whole presentation. Um, but you can also uh, email me if you would like later, and I can send you the PowerPoint presentation if you want. So you don't need to, I meant to say that at the beginning, so you don't need to be taking notes set up in your company's name. You own it, you have the password username. They are, they should be representing you. I mean, that's my, that's my philosophy because if you're transparent and you want to move away someday, you should be able to take that with you. That, those are your assets, your digital assets, not theirs. So these are things that you can do on your website and basically um, you know, again, PowerPoint presentations, SlideShare, but they also take videos on SlideShare.net. And, and people forget about the whole news thing, but there are news channels out there. And you can have tip sheets, how to, there's Dig, StumbleUpon, and all of these networking news sites that are out there that you can add content to. So why is this all important? Because on the internet, you leverage one thing against the other. All of these, what I call, create the big wave. It's, it's almost like a tsunami. You have all this stuff out there that's optimized, and it all starts working for you. And when all these engines start indexing content, because people want that. They either want a product, they want product information. A lot of people start with research online. So if you have, if you have a, here's a tip for e-commerce, by the way. If you have great content on your e-commerce site, what that means is if you help, let's say you're selling jewelry online, which is, by the way, a $1.4 billion market online for, for uh, uh, Zales and, you know, maybe not in this economy, but, you know, in the past, the, these jewelry sites that are really well known are, are generating a lot of revenue online. People say, oh, people are not buying diamonds online. That's not true. You have to look at the stats. They are buying diamonds online. You know, so, you know, uh, so have a whole section on diamonds. How do I buy a diamond? What does a diamond look like? What's the quality of a diamond? Da, da, da. So they start by looking for content, and they say, well, here I can also buy the diamond. I'm going to bookmark this site because it's great. It gave me all this information, and you become a loyal user of that product or service. So add value. If you're a, um, an e-commerce uh, vendor, you want to add value, and your value is your expertise. If you think you can start an e-commerce site and have no information about that product, you're probably going to fail, because the the best e-commerce sites are sites that add value as well as just sell products. They help you make the decision to buy at their store. 
They make it easy for you to buy. They don't put barriers up and, you know, have you have to, you know, put down, you know, like this other fellow said, you don't have to put your name, address, and sign up and register before you even purchase. You have a choice. You can do that or not. So e-commerce is a whole other game, but if you have good content and you have good products and you have good knowledge, you want to share that. You want to maybe be in, uh, do a blog on the blogosphere. Add, show people that you have knowledge on this product. On the other hand, the social networks today are a great resource for employers. It's a great resource for companies. So people are using them. Millions and millions of people are using them. So you have to see, is that worth it? Because the people that are on there are going to say, great, let me see what she has to say. Now they're looking at content again. So I'll, I'll talk about that. So basically... Your digital assets are all of these things. And if you create content and you make sure you optimize each of them, you can leverage them like that big wave so that when people are looking for information, you come up in all the places that you need to come up. And then you see where you are and you measure everything.